Come on, show me. Show me your glory. Come on, lift up your face right now. Would you just begin worshiping Jesus with your own song right now? Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, if, you, if the Lord's given you the gift of a, a heavenly tongue, let's just worship him right now. Come on, let's fill the air right now with our praises, with our worship. Shoving cobwebs, removing cobwebs. He's just removing cobwebs right now off of people's minds, off of your thinking, just cloudiness. Uh, fuzziness is just going right now. Angels of encouragement, Lord, that gives strengthening touches. I pray that you send warfaring angels, Lord God. I pray that you'd station them around this property, Lord. I pray that you'd station them around the perimeter of 1338 King Street. I pray that you'd station warfaring angels around the perimeter of this building right now. Father, I pray over the lives of your people, over every family that calls Harvest Time home, Lord, over every person that's a member of our family. I pray, God, that you dispatch mighty angels right now, Lord, to come to the aid and come to the rescue of your people, Lord. I pray that demonic strongholds would be broken down, Lord. I pray that assignments would be warded off. I pray that they would be fended off in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you'd send angels, Lord, Father, to come and give a strength to the a t a strengthening touch to the weak that strengthens them in their innermost being, Lord, that gives courage, that renews their spirit, that renews their heart. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, captain of the host, captain of the angelic armies of heaven, Lord, we call out to you tonight, God, and we ask that you'd send, Lord, armies of angels, Lord, to come. Father, I pray that you would break through Baal Parazim. I pray that you'd break through like mighty rushing waters that cannot be stopped, Lord. Father, I pray that you'd cleanse, and I pray, Lord, that you'd just move forward, Lord God. Father, I pray that you'd just wash junk out of our lives, Lord. Father, I pray you'd wash stinking thinking out of our minds, Lord. Father, I pray that you'd come visit your people, Lord. God, I pray that you'd pour a wave over Harvest Time Church this evening. God, I pray that a mighty wave, Lord, of your saving power, of your grace, Lord, would just pour out over us in Jesus' name. Come on, church, worship the Lord right now. Come on, worship him right now. Worship him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can do better than that. Come on. Let's give him a big praise right now in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. God bless you, everyone. Good evening. I'm glad that you're here tonight. And uh, listen, it just, it, it means so much to me. And it means so much to the Lord that you're here this evening. You know, we've come tonight because we're hungry. We've come tonight because we want more of the Lord. We've come tonight because we're just expecting to me. I want to tell you, I believe that the Lord has a breakthrough that he wants to give to us this evening. Uh, I believe that the Lord, you know, Jesus said, blessed is everyone who is hungry and thirsty for more of the Lord, for they shall be satisfied. So I know why you're here on a Friday night in January. It's because you're hungry for more of Jesus. It's because you're hungry for a move in your life. You're hungry for a move in your family. You're hungry for a move in our church. And uh, I want to tell you, you're blessed tonight that you came because you shall be filled. You're not going to leave this place until the Lord has, has met you and has filled you up. I have a, a little word that I want to share with you that the Lord put on my heart um, for this evening. And it really has to do with the, the, the relationship between uh, obedience and faith and uh, uh, that being the key to beginning the flow of miracles in our life. I believe that um, at the start of this new year, I believe that God wants to, to turn a spigot tonight 
and he wants to begin a flow of miracles. I believe he wants to begin a flow of miracles in your life, and I believe that he wants to begin a flow of miracles in our church. And I think there's some keys for that um, that we find in the ministry of Jesus, and I want to just share a, little, a few thoughts about that this evening. If you have your Bibles, look with me in John chapter 2. John chapter 2. Uh, this is the very first miracle of Jesus that's recorded in the Gospel of John, of John, and it's the story of Jesus changing water into wine. John chapter 2, and beginning at verse 1, uh, it says, On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you to do. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheap wine when everybody is drunk, but you have saved the best for last. This was the first of his miraculous signs that Jesus performed in Cana in Galilee. He thus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. I want to say to you simply, first of all this evening, that the prerequisite for a miracle is that you are in a place where you must have one. Beloved, you will never have a miracle until you are in a position where you must have one. You know, that's something very important to remember. Miracles only come when you're in a place where God must come through for you, where help from heaven is the only kind of help that can rescue you. You know, uh, a lot of people try to live their lives in such a way that, that they avoid getting into a position where they have to have a miracle. You know, if you, if you don't want a miracle, if you don't want to ever get into that position where you have to have one, then you'll never have a miracle. But I have very good news for you tonight. If you have an impossible situation that is confronting you, then you are exactly where you need to be to receive a miracle. The, the pre prerequisite for a miracle is that I'm in a place where I have to have one. And Jesus and his disciples found themselves in a situation where they were with a young couple who had to have a miracle. They needed help from heaven. There are some obstacles to miracle. You know, one obstacle to miracles in our life is bad theology. There's a particular kind of theology called cessationism. Cessationism is the teaching that miracles stopped after the time of Jesus and the apostles. And once the Bible was completed, God stopped doing miracles anymore. You know, cessationism was just about dead. It was very popular at the beginning of the last century. And it had all but pretty much died out. Uh, everywhere, And in the last year or two, there has been a tremendous revival of cessationism. God doesn't do that anymore. It's bad theology. Cessationism overlooks the unchanging nature of God. Can I tell you that God has always intervened in the affairs of men, and he hasn't stopped doing that. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forevermore. Cessationism overlooks the explicit promises of Jesus. Jesus said, he who believes in me, the things that you have seen me do, he shall do and 
greater than these, Jesus said. Cessationism overlooks the expectations of the New Testament writers. These signs shall accompany those who believe in my name. In my name they shall speak with new tongues. They'll cast out demons. If they drink any deadly poison, it shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Another strain of bad theology is this idea that God only performs miracles in a context of evangelism where he can get all the glory that leads to salvation of souls. And let me tell you that God does do miracles in the context of evangelism that leads to the salvation of souls. The gospel is to be preached with signs and wonders following. Our friend Pastor Raymond Mui shared about some of the tremendous miracles that they've seen preaching on the steps of Buddhist temples and in the name of Jesus, seeing people receiving miracles. And God certainly does do miracles in that context. But can I tell you that that is not the only context in which God does miracles. God certainly does miracles because he wants to bring glory to himself. But you know, God also does miracles simply because he's good to us. He also does miracles simply because he cares. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. He, he does miracles because he cares about us. He does miracles because he, he delights to bless us. He does miracles because he wants to spare us from pain and embarrassment. He does miracles to rescue us. Jesus said of your earthly fathers, being imperfect, know how to give good gifts. How much more does your heavenly father give good gifts to you? So bad theology is one obstacle to miracles. Bad thinking is another obstacle to miracles. My need is so insignificant in the grand scheme of things. God has so many other important things to attend to in the universe that certainly this little thing that I'm facing is, is very, very small and insignificant to him. You know, I, I find it interesting that this is the first miracle in the Gospel of John. This is not a life or death situation. This is not someone who had suffered with a horrendous illness for many years or who was in the grips of demonic uh, oppression. This was a couple who ran out of wine. A and they were certainly in danger of facing a, a little bit of embarrassment in front of their family and in front of their friends. But Jesus did this miracle simply because he cares. He cares about our happiness and our reputations, and he cares about the transitions in our lives. And so sometimes we think, oh, in the grand scheme of things, this thing I need from God, it's so small. Surely he doesn't care. But Jesus said not even a sparrow falls to the ground. But God notices it. And how much more valuable are you than a sparrow? Another type of bad thinking is the thinking, well, since I got myself into this mess, I don't really deserve God's help. Do you ever have your mother say to you, you made your bed, now lie in it, right? And sometimes we feel like God is saying the same thing to us. You, you know, this couple ran out of wine because somebody messed up. Someone made a mistake. Uh, either they overextended themselves and they invited too many guests, or they didn't plan properly, or they chose a bad caterer. Whatever it was, someone made a mistake, and that's why there was a need. And maybe you've made some decisions in your life that have gotten you in over your head. Can I tell you, it's still okay to ask God for help, for rescue. One of my favorite crazy old stories in the Old Testament is when Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, goes to visit Ahab. And Ahab says, hey, let's go to war together. And Jehoshaphat says, well, let's ask a prophet. And they ask a prophet. And the prophet says, no, don't go. It's a bad idea. And, and Jehoshaphat decides to go anyway. And Ahab says to Jehoshaphat, hey, you know what? Um, they're going to be looking for me. So I'm going to go into battle disguised as a foot soldier. And I want you to dress up in my robe and ride in my chariot so that, you know, they won't come after me. And Jehoshaphat goes along with it. 
He's been warned by a prophet not to do it. And then he, he falls for this cockamamie idea of Ahab. You go into battle dressed like a king, and I'll go hidden dressed like a foot soldier. And of course, the battle was on, and the whole army came after Jehoshaphat because they saw that he was the king. But Jehoshaphat cried out to the Lord. Did you ever get yourself in a dumb situation? You say, oh, man, uh, what a... What a harebrained idea this was. How did anybody ever, can I tell you what? You can still call out to God for help. Jehoshaphat called out for help, and the Lord heard his cry, and the Lord rescued him. Bad theology, bad thinking. Uh, Another obstacle to miracles is bad feelings. Angry at God. God, why did you allow this to happen to me? Why did you allow me to go through this? God, you could have prevented it. You could have stopped it. You could have done something different. God, why have you done this to me? Can I tell you, remember that he is your answer. He is not your antagonist. He's not out to crush you. He's out to build you up. So what do we do when we want to start a flow of miracles? Three things I want to give you very quickly. First of all, if you need to start a flow of miracles in your life, Number one, bypass the caterer. Bypass the caterer. Mary, the mother of Jesus, came to her son, and she said, they have no more wine. She didn't go to the caterer. She didn't go to the master of the banquet. She went right to the top. She went right to Jesus. Beloved, can I tell you that Jesus is the ultimate authority in every situation in your life. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me on heaven and and on earth. Jesus is always the ultimate authority. He trumps all human authority. He trumps all other spiritual authority. He, He has authority over the elements. He has authority over the wind and the waves. He has authority over the molecules that make water water and make wine wine. The more of life I live... the the more I really see how everything, everything is spiritual and and how even the reactions that people have to us, uh, the the favor that they show to us, the averse reactions that they demonstrate towards us, it, it is all such a spiritual thing. And God is the one who is able to open the hearts of kings to you. To man belong the plans of the heart, but the answer that comes is from the Lord. Jesus has authority over whatever or whomever is standing in the way of your miracle. He has authority over cells in your body. He has authority over scar tissue. He has authority over every kind of sickness, every kind of addiction, over emotional turmoil. Jesus' authority trumps all other authority. Turn your despair into specific prayer. Ask God specifically what you need. Did you ever notice how many times Jesus in the Gospels asked people, what do you want me to do for you? Blind Bartimaeus, as Jesus was passing through Jericho, blind Bartimaeus called out, stopped Jesus in his tracks. Jesus said, bring him to me. He's a blind man. He has been blind his whole life. And Jesus asks him, what do you want me to do for you? What do you mean? What do you want me to do for you? I'm blind, Jesus. Can I tell you that Jesus doesn't ask the question because he needs information. God already knows what you need before you ask him. Jesus asks, what do you want me to do for you? Because we need the faith formation that comes through articulating our needs to God. See, prayer doesn't inform God. It forms me. It forms my faith. Beloved, I want to tell you, I really believe that so many times we do without. I believe that so many times uh, we, we go without answers to prayer, without miracles and breakthroughs and things that we might have had simply because we didn't go and ask God specifically and answer that question, what do you want me to do for you? 
Listen, if you ask amiss, you might miss the miracle that you might have had. This is good preaching right here. Ask God specifically. Don't ask amiss for your health. Don't ask amiss for your finances. Don't ask amiss for your relationships. Don't ask amiss for your children. God, bless my kids. Do whatever you want to do in their lives. No, tell God, God, this is what I'm asking you to do for my family. God, this is what I'm asking you uh, to do in my professional career. God, this is what I'm asking you to do in my home. God, this is what I'm asking you to do in in my health. You see, you know, that really puts it on the line, doesn't it? Do whatever you want to do, God, is a wimpy little prayer, isn't it? It's not a prayer that's very full of expectation, is it? You know, when blind Bartimaeus got dragged before Jesus and Jesus said, what do you want me to do? You know, maybe asking to see again was too big. Oh, Jesus, just bless me. Jesus, just do whatever you want to do. No, 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 no. Jesus, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go. it's very interesting, go. He said, go. And he, I think there was some action involved there. And immediately he received his sight. What do you want to do when you start the flow of miracles? Uh, bypass the caterer. A, a second thing, take a step in the right direction. Take a step in the right direction. Do whatever he tells you to do. And beloved, listen, this is the crux of what I feel in my heart to share with you from the Holy Spirit tonight. Listen to this. This is from the Lord. An act of obedience is an open door for God to move in your life. That's good right there. It's even tweetable. An act of obedience is an open door for God to move in your life. Can I tell you this? You don't have to have the Christian life all down pat before God will help you. You just have to take the first steps towards obedience. A number of years ago, I was working with a man whose life was, it was, he had made such a mess. I mean, it was, you know, the word for loose in the Bible means to untangle because we can, we can really tangle ourselves up good. And this guy had tangled his life up so bad in every way. I mean, you know, he owed the IRS a billion dollars. His, his marriage was falling apart. It was, uh, he was addicted. It was just, just, it was so complex, the, the web of issues. And I, I called a friend of mine and I said, I don't, I don't know where to even begin with this guy. There's so many issues on so many fronts. And my friend said, ask him to go back to the last act of willful disobedience and begin there. Wow, that was an awesome, powerful piece of advice. You know what? He did it, and God started moving in his life. Listen, you don't have to have it all figured out. You just have to take a step of obedience. Obedience is the practical expression of our faith. Paul talks about the obedient life that comes by faith. When Peter let down his net one more time, his obedience to Jesus was an act of faith. When the disciples broke the first barley roll and handed it to the first hungry person out of 5,000, that, that act of obedience was an act of faith. When they went into the towns and villages for the first time without Jesus and they laid their hand on the first sick person and began to pray for them, that was an act of obedience. That was an act of faith. Obedience is faith. And faith is what releases the supernatural power of God. Can I tell you, Jesus cannot help himself when people reach out to him in faith. Mary came to Jesus. She skipped the caterers. She said, Jesus, we have a problem. They have no more wine. And Jesus says, woman, why are you messing with me? It's not my time yet. I, my public ministry hasn't, hasn't launched. I, I'm, not, I'm not ready for prime time yet. It, it's not, not in my timing and my plan yet. But I love it. Mary just plows right ahead. She doesn't, she just ignores Jesus and she starts talking to the servants. Get ready. Do whatever he tells you to do. 
Beloved, can I tell you, I really believe that for some of us in this room tonight, there is an act of obedience that is the key to starting a flow of miracles. Elijah said to the widow woman, make me a cake first. And that act of obedience began the flow of God's provision in her house. Elisha told the widow, go gather every empty jar in the town. And that act of obedience began the flow of God's provision. He said to Naaman, go dip in the river seven times. And that act of obedience was what released his miracle. I remember a number of years ago, we had a, a man here who had... Uh, uh, tumors on his liver, cancerous tumors on his liver. And so he was going down to the city for surgery. And uh, we it's going in on a Monday, so it was Sunday. It was our last service of the morning. And uh, we had him up here at the front, and a number of people were around laying hands, praying over him. And uh, our friend Steve Gamble actually uh, came to me. He's like, Pastor, he said, uh, I feel like we're supposed to blow the shofar over over Mike. And so, you know, what are you going to do when you have cancerous tumors all over your liver? You just do whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do. So I literally have never seen that before, but I, I kind of prayed for a few minutes and then left the sanctuary. And on my way out the back door, Mike was on the ground and they had the shofar against his body and they were blowing the shofar over his liver. All right. He went to Sloan the next day and they opened him up and he had several uh, tumors on his liver. They removed a couple of them, but a few of them were inoperable. They couldn't remove them. And Mike and his wife were extremely uh, downcast. They were extremely discouraged uh, because, you know, they just believed so much that God was going to do something about it. About two weeks later, we were on a bus two coach buses with 130 people going to the cleansing stream retreat in Pittsburgh and we got a call on this cell phone it was Mike and his wife they were back at Sloan he went for a follow-up PET scan and the tumors that had been inoperable were removed completely and had disappeared and were gone <laughs> off of his liver do whatever he tells you to do had a, one of our young adults who uh, came up to me in December and she shared with me that uh, she had a significant birthday in the month of first week of December and she received a fairly substantial amount of money for her birthday and she just felt from the Holy Spirit to give that to the Jump In campaign. So she gave that money and she came up to tell me, she said, Pastor, she said, uh, a week later, I got called in and she said, I got a huge promotion in my job. She said, I wasn't anticipating it. I wasn't in line for it. I wasn't even aware that it was coming open. But she said, the, the promotion that I received at work far exceeded what it was that I offered to the Lord. Do whatever he tells you to do. Listen, there is a, an act of obedience that will release your flow of miracles. An act of obedience will be God's open door to begin to move. And I got this from the Holy Spirit. I'm not even sure what it really means, but I just feel to say this out to you this evening. Uh, if you need a miracle, then sow an act of obedience in kind. If you need a financial miracle, then sow an act of obedience in your finances. If you need a miracle in your relationships, then sow an act of obedience in your relationships. You know what? Maybe there's something that needs to get put right. Jesus said if you come to worship and you remember that there's a relationship that is out of joint, out of whack, go make it right. So if you need a miracle in an area of your relationships, maybe an act of obedience in kind will be, it's, this is a principle of the kingdom. It's the way things work. If you need an act of, uh, uh, if you need a miracle in your health, if you need a, a miracle of physical healing, go go so an act of obedience uh, in, in kind. Go lay hands and pray for someone who is sick and believe Jesus to heal them. 
by his power and by his glory. I just have this from the Holy Spirit. Uh, so an act of obedience in kind, and it's going to be the open door for God to bless you. All right, what do we do when uh, we need a, a miracle, when we want to start a flow of miracles in our life? The final thing is this, hang in there until the better end. Hang in there until the better end. You know, we always talk about hanging in there till the bitter end. So, but you know, with Jesus, it's always a better end. And that's absolutely the truth. The tendency of life is for the joie de vie to fizzle. But I want to tell you that Jesus hasn't even begun to show you his best yet. He is the God who does exceedingly abundantly above what we could ask or even dream. God said, I have plans for you. I have plans to prosper and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has even dreamed the things that God has prepared for those of us who love him, but he's revealed them to us by his Holy Spirit. Your latter will be greater than the best. Look at how Jesus answered that couple. He answered them with quantity and with quality. And beloved, I want to tell you, I want to speak it over you in the name of Jesus. I believe that God wants to release over your life both quantity and quality. I believe that he wants to release over you long life and healthy days filled with the joy of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord, the provision of the Lord, quantity and quality. I'll end with this. Uh, I had some really dear friends from Buffalo, New York, uh, he was a uh, Christian Missionary Alliance minister, and uh, he was pastoring and had been beat up in the pastorate and was very spiritually dry, and some friends invited him to uh, the Toronto outpouring that was going on at the time, and uh, they kind of tricked him. They kind of really didn't let him know what kind of service it was that he was going to. And so when he arrives at the Toronto Revival in full, full, you know, swing, he was, you know, he was determined to leave, but he was so desperate and he was so spiritually dry, like he was willing to try anything. Can I tell you, when you reach that point, you're in a good position. When you're like, just like, God, I'll just, whatever, I'll just, you know, uh, uh, whatever you want to do, I'm just going to take it. And so he was so dry. And it came to the ministry time at the end, and because he was a pastor, uh, when they began having the ministry teams praying over everybody, he thought, surely, you know, John Arnott or Randy Clark or, or one of the pastors would lay hands and pray on him. But when it came to his turn, uh, it was a 16 or 17-year-old girl that was standing in front of him to lay hands and minister on him. And he thought, pfft. You know, I'm I'm a pastor. I'm I went to seminary, and you know, I have a teenage kid standing in front of me. And the little girl said to him, she said, "You have been ministering out of the last drop in your bucket, but the Holy Spirit says to you, from tonight forward, you're going to minister out of the overflow." And she put her finger on his forehead and wham, he went down and didn't know anything for two or three days later. And when he got finally awakened out of his time with the Holy Spirit, he was in the overflow of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, God wants to start a flow in your life of both quantity and quality. Skip the caterer. Go straight to Jesus, the ultimate authority. Take a step in the right direction. Do whatever he tells you to do and hang in there until the better end. I want to invite you to stand with me right now and we're going to spend a few minutes praying. I have, well, you know what? I'm going to wait a second and I'm going to ask three questions from the Holy Spirit. Listen, if you need a miracle, if you need a breakthrough in your life, you know, our church needs miracles this year. So if you want to begin a flow of miracles in your life, in your family, in our church, I want to invite you to come real quick down to the front with me, and we're going to spend just a couple minutes praying together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Come on, let's just celebrate Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come all the way down to the front if you would. Come all the way down to the front so there's room for people to come behind you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to ask you, this is just purely symbolic and voluntary, but if you would, would you take one hand and put it on your heart and one hand and put it on your head? And we're going to pray right now that if there's any bad thinking, bad theology, or bad feelings that are an obstacle to miracles, that the Holy Spirit would just remove them right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your precious people, Lord, who love you so much. Lord, blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty, for they shall be satisfied. They shall be filled to overflowing. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, that you'd come through this room with the magic eraser of the Holy Spirit. And Father, I pray that if there is anything, Lord, in our mind or in our heart, Lord, that is an obstacle to your power moving in our lives, I pray that you would erase it right now. Father, if there is any bad theology, Lord, that is creating an obstacle, Lord, to receiving uh, and being a conduit for miracles, I pray, Father, that you just erase it right now. Any uh, cessationism, Lord, uh, any idea, Father, that, that Lord, uh, that you only do miracles in the context of evangelism and bringing yourself glory. Lord, if there's any faulty theology, flawed theology, Lord, if there's any bad thinking, Lord, that what I need is so insignificant in the grand scheme of things that I got myself into this mess so I don't deserve God's help. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would just erase bad thinking. Come on, I just see it right now. I just see that I see that white magic eraser. You know that thing that you use to get smudges off of walls? I just see it right now. Father, just scrub and cleanse right now. Scrub and cleanse right now. Father, if there's any bad feelings in our heart, Lord. Father, if there's any grief, Lord, any sorrow. Lord, if there's any anger at God, why? Why did you allow me to go through this? Why didn't you come when I called for you? Where were you? Jesus, when I called for you, Lord, why? Why did you let that person go home and leave me? Lord, why, why, why did you allow? Why did I get downsized, Lord? Why, why did these things, come on, why did I meet that person who, who just took me down the garden path and wasted years of my life? Come on, I want you to just erase it right now. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, if you're holding on to something like that, just let it go right now. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you right now for changing thinking, changing mindsets, changing dispositions. Lord, I pray that we'd be renewed in the spirit of our mind, Lord. I pray, Father, Lord, that we wouldn't be uh, patterned after this world, but Lord, that we'd be renewed in our mind, in our thinking, in our thought patterns, and our thought process right now. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Second thing from the Holy Spirit. What do you want me to do for you? Come on, I want to ask you to just spend a few minutes, and I want you to begin to pray specific prayers. What do you want me to do for you? Let's not pray amiss. Let's pray specifically. God, I need you to show up in my marriage. God, I need you to show up in my house. I need you to show up. Come on, what do you want? Don't just say, bless my children. What do you want? What, do you, what, do you, what future is it that you want for your children? What, what is it? God, I want to see them sloppy in love with Jesus. I want to see them completely surrendered, God, to your will. Father, I want to see them, Lord, full of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to see them ministering and moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I, I don't want to see them just barely saved. I want to see them leaders in the church. Church. I'm going to see the ministry leaders in the church. I'm going to see them blessed and happy and fearing and loving the Lord. I don't want to just see them hap happily married to a, a good pick. I want to see them married to a spouse who's sloppy in love with Jesus too. Come on, what do, you, what do you need in your finances? Don't just say, Lord, bless my finances. Would you tell God specifically, Lord, this is what I need this year. Lord, I, I need a specific increase. I need a specific open door. God, I need a specific uh, opportunity. Come on, if it's a job, ask for a job. If it's a better job, ask for a better job. If it's fa for favor in the job that you have, ask for favor in the job that you have. Come on, what is the need in your health? Come on, let's not just say, God, do whatever it is you want to do. If it's your will, come on, ask him, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? 
Would you do it right now? Come on, what do you want me to do? Just between you and God, come on, do it right now. What do you want me to do? Ask him. Ask him right now. Ask him right now. Woman, it's not my time. It's not my time. Why, why are you? But Jesus can't help himself. Ask him specifically. Come on, we're going to ask specifically for some things that we need here at Harvest Time Church right now. Father, we just come before you as a corporate body. And because you said to ask us, Lord, because, because you said to ask, Lord, because you said to present our petitions to you, Father, because you said, Lord, we're telling you, Father, that, that we have needs and we're asking you. Father, we're asking, Lord, in the first half of 2014 that money would pour in for the Phase 2 building. Father, we're asking in the name of Jesus that by June 1st we would have $2.5 million dollars cash in hand for the start of the new building. Father, we're praying that you would send in $2.5 million in cash by June 1st this year, Father. God, we're praying, Lord, that you would put your favor on our documents that are on file with Town Hall right now. Father, we pray that you would give favor with the Wetlands Department, Lord, and that they would quickly approve our drawings and pass them on to the Public Health department. Father, we pray that you'd give us favor in the public health department, Lord, and that they would quickly approve our drawings, Lord, and pass them on to the zoning enforcement department. Father, we pray that you'd give our drawings favor in the zoning enforcement office, Lord, and that they would quickly pass them on to the building department, Lord. We pray that you'd give us favor, Lord, with every set of eyes that has to handle our documents and review our documents in the building department, Lord, with the structural engineer, with the mechanic, engineer, Lord, uh, with uh, every every different professional, Lord, that has to review the drawings, Lord, we pray that our drawings would pass through the building permit process in record time, Father. We pray that by June 1st, Lord, we would have our building permit in hand, Lord, and that we would be ready to move forward with the building. Father, we pray for a flow of finances, Lord, that is going to continue like a steady stream, Lord, all through the construction process, Lord. Father, we're believing you for no interruptions, for no halts, Lord, for no compromises, Lord, for no stoppage of work on our new building, Father. We pray that day after day and week after week and month after month, Lord, for 14 months until the building is finished, Lord, that pro uh, construction would progress with no interruption, with no delay, Lord, of any kind for any reason and certainly not for lack of funds, Lord. Father, we pray that money would pour in, Father, even more, Lord than we could possibly ask or imagine. God, we pray that every need of phase two would be satisfied. Lord, we pray that every seat would be installed. We pray that every lighting fixture, Lord, would be in place with a bulb in it. Lord, we pray that every speaker, every video screen, Lord, we pray that every every couch, Lord, every table, every uh, chair, Lord, every, uh, we pray for the espresso machine and the cafe and the coffee bar, Lord, and, and Father, for the shelving for the bookstore, Lord, we pray pray, Father, that every piece of it would be done in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that when we move into that building, Lord, Harvest Time Church would be completely debt-free, Lord, that we would be debt-free on phase one, that we'd be debt-free on phase two, that we would be debt-free on 1338 King Street, that we would be debt-free on 1362 King Street, Father. We pray that it would be paid in full, Lord. We're asking you these things specifically, Lord. Father, because you're good. Father, because you said you'd build your church, Lord, because we've set our hearts to glorifying the name of Jesus in Greenwich and in Westchester County and in Fairfield County. So, Father, we're asking you specifically, God, we're praying that you'd send such a wave of the Holy Spirit this year that it would make the Greenwich outpouring look like a drop in the bucket, Lord. God, we pray that you'd come with a powerful visitation. I pray that fireballs would fly in this sanctuary and, Lord, that it would hit every hungry heart who desires to have an encounter with your presence, oh God. Father, I pray that you'd release mighty miracles of healing in this place, Lord. I pray, God, that we would see. Lord, we thank you for the miracles that, ha that have we've seen already. But God, we pray for astounding miracles in front of people's eyes, God. God, we pray for blind eyes to open and for deaf ears to open. We pray for the lame to walk, Lord. We pray for people with skin diseases and disorders of every kind to be 
be instantly healed in the sight of all who are looking on, God. We pray, Father, that you'd come with a wave of salvation over this place, Lord. We pray that the conviction of the Holy Spirit, that mercy and truth would be met together in this sanctuary this year. We pray something would happen. We pray something would move, that something would shake, God. We don't want it just the same old, same old this year, Lord. Father, we want you to come, Lord, in a full expression, a manifestation of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Father, we're asking you these things. Come, come visit our teenagers. Visit our children. Visit the little kids in the nursery. Visit the toddlers. Visit the elementary age children. Visit our young adults. Visit our college students. Visit our singles. Lord, I pray this would be a year of meeting and matching and mating, Lord God. Father, I pray it would be a year of marrying, Lord. I pray that you'd leave Ruths to their Boazes and Boazes to their Ruths, Lord God. I pray for godly matches. I pray for godly marriages, Lord God. I pray for uh, just a year of weddings, Lord God. Weekend after weekend, wedding after wedding after wedding. I pray that children would be born, Lord God, to godly couples. I pray the heritage of the righteous, Lord God. Father, that children would be born with destiny over their lives, Lord, with a calling from the womb, Lord. I pray, God, that, that just gifts of creativity, Lord, would just be released over our congregation, Lord. I pray, Father, that gifts of music. I pray gifts of songwriting, Lord, and composing, Lord. I pray gifts of composing literature, Lord, of writing books, Lord. I pray gifts of creating art, Lord, uh, in every form would just be released over the congregation. I pray the gift of dance would be released over the congregation, Lord, and there would just be a celebration and dance in this place this year. Father, I just ask in Jesus' name, Lord, that the joy of the Lord would break forth in our congregation, Father. Lord, we're just asking you for these things. Come on, give the Lord a big uh, just offering of thanksgiving and praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, there's one more thing that we need to do. Lift up your lift up your hands to the Lord if you would. Three things I had from the Holy Spirit. We, talked, we took care of bad thinking, bad theology, and bad feelings. We asked God specifically for some things. Now lift up your face to heaven. Is there an act of obedience that you need to do that will be an open door for God to move? I don't know what it is. Only you can answer that question. But I want you to just ask the Holy Spirit. Do whatever he tells you to do. I, I just have a feeling that maybe there's some people in the room and you felt a little nudge from the Holy Spirit already, even before this evening, before this night, a little nudge from the Holy Spirit, something to do, a little act of obedience, and maybe you haven't gotten around to doing yet. Is there something that, is there some act of obedience? Is there an act of obedience in kind that you can sow that will be an open door for the Holy Spirit to move? in your life. Come on, just you just ask the Holy Spirit. Only you can answer that question. O only the Holy Spirit can help you to know. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, would you just say, show me, Lord? Show me, Jesus. Father, right now, I just pray, Lord, those who are the sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit of God. So, Holy Spirit, we just pray. God, I pray for ears that are anointed to hear your voice, Lord. And Father, I pray that you would give us heaven strategies, Lord, that release heaven's results, Father. I pray, Father, in our lives, Lord, if there is a simple act of obedience, Lord, if it's letting down our net one more time, if it's breaking a barley loaf and passing it to the first hungry man, Lord, whatever that act of obedience is, if it's untying a donkey, and when someone says, what are you doing? You say, the master has need of this. Lord, whatever, whatever that act of obedience is, Lord, Father, I pray that we'd be quick to hear, that we'd recognize, Lord, your voice. And Father, that we'd just run and do it, Lord. Father, that we'd go to the well 
that we'd fill the water pots, that we'd take a dipper to the caterer and say, taste this, try this. And somewhere in the process of drawing the water and filling the pots and taking the dipper, the miracle unfolds, the miracle happens. So God, I pray, come on, just tell him, Lord, make my ears quick to listen and make my feet quick to obey. Make my ears quick to listen and make our feet quick to obey. Father, we ask this in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's sing one more time. Holy Spirit. Just